Hey guys, here with another real time zoom workout recording for you. So this is our abdominal circuit followed by our glute burnout circuit. So the way that this workout is structured is we have our usual five minute warm up, 10 exercises, 30 seconds each, no rest. Then we went into two separate circuits. So first we went into an abdominal strength circuit. So this was 11 exercises broken up into 40 second work intervals and 20 second rest intervals. We went through the circuit twice and there was a 40 second rest between sets so that we get a minute break between exercises. At the end of that, we then had a quick break and then went into our glute burnout circuit. So the glute burnout circuit is eight exercises or technically seven exercises and a stretch. So they're 30 seconds each, no rest. So it's four minutes and we do it twice. So the first three exercises work both legs and then there are four exercises that work one leg and then a stretch of that glute. And then we repeat the circuit working the other leg. At the end of that, went into an about 10 minute cool down stretch, which was a deeper stretch of particularly focusing on the glutes and the lower body, um, a little bit on the abs, but mostly sort of glutes, hip flexors, quads, hamstrings, that sort of thing, where we can get really tight and those muscles that we worked a lot tonight. So you don't need any equipment for this workout, but I do really recommend a soft surface such as a yoga or exercise mat as all the exercises, I think, except three, we are on the ground in some form of another, either on our back, on our front, or on hands and legs, that type of thing. So we'll be pretty uncomfortable doing this workout on a hard surface. So yeah, a yoga mat or an exercise mat, or just some towels folded up, anything that can create a soft surface for you. Other than that, you don't need any equipment and you don't need shoes. So grab your sweat towel, grab a water bottle, and let's get into this workout. All right. So we'll get started. So we're just going to be starting with our step jacks. So just side to middle. We're not going down yet. We'll do that later. So getting that little bend in the legs. Start getting those knees and hips moving. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Engaging that core, keeping everything tight, control movements. All right, just our pose skipping. So calf to calf, bouncing on the toes, legs are in straight lines, keeping the core tight, back upright, and we'll get the shoulders and wrists going as well. So just small circles with the wrists, loosen those up and slightly larger with the shoulders as if we were holding a rope. All right, we'll just do our up and over skaters. So up in the middle, open the, open the abdominals and the chest up and then down at the side. Warming those knee and hips and glutes up a bit more. Get those obliques on that side to side as well. All right, runner with our right leg moving. So left leg supporting in a half squat position. Core is tight, back is straight. That right leg is pistoning forward and back quickly, as well as those arms, getting the heart rate up, the blood flowing, warming those shoulders up. Okay, just our normal windmill. So legs and arms apart, then we bend over and we're side to side, back is straight, just rotate. Make sure that you turn to look up at the hand at the ceiling. So get that rotation going. And keep those arms straight. All right, back up to our runner. Left leg is moving this time. So really driving that knee forward and then Leg extends back onto the toes and drive through. 
keeping the core tight the whole time and pumping those arms. All right, half squat punches. So go down half squat and then up and punch across the body. So nice and quick with these. Getting those glutes and hamstrings loosened, this is those quads. And also that core and those obliques when we reach across the body. All right, going into our side runner, right leg is moving. So left leg is in that same half squat position. And then the leg is going side to side, pumping quickly, core is tight, back is straight, and those arms are going as well. Really feeling warm in these glutes now, and these hamstrings, and that lower abdominals and hip flexors. All right, now we have our up-down step jacks. So up and out to the side, then down in the middle, Make sure we're keeping the back straight. We're not bending over to get down in the middle. We drop the knees and hips, and then the arms hang and touch the ground. And then back up and out. All right, and just finishing with the side runner, left side moving. So really quick movements. We should be nice and warm by now. Don't forget those arms. something that's going to be important throughout all these exercises which I harp on about a fair bit and that is making sure that we're keeping our lower back on the ground when we're doing these exercises so the first two exercises we have our scissor kicks and then our flutter kicks so what we want to do is make sure that to start with curl up so that we can feel our lower back on the ground and then we want to extend our legs down and make sure that we're keeping that lower back on the ground by engaging the abs. What you'll find is you'll probably get to a point where your back starts to arch. What you need to do is figure out what that angle is and that is the low point that you keep your legs at. If you go below that, you're going to be getting a gap between your lower back and the, and the ground. You're going to be putting strain on your lower back and not working the abdominals properly. So to engage those abs and get them stronger, we need to have the legs at a point where that lower back is on the ground. That way the abdominals are working. And then as we get stronger, we'll be able to drop those legs lower and lower and have that strength to push that, uh, that back back onto the ground. So when I say keep your legs as low as possible, if you can't get to here without your lower back coming off, that's too low. Keep them higher. You need to be able to feel the burn there and you don't want to be able to put any, uh, like your hand or anything below. So if just figure out where that is for you and just work at that level. So that's going to mean that you don't get pain in your lower back and that you're actually working the abdominals properly. So all that being said, Let's get started. So our first one, as I said, is just our scissor kicks. So we're just on our back and our legs. We're gonna be out straight if we can and we're just gonna cross them over, one across the other on top of each other. So let's get started. So find where you can keep your lower back on the ground. Crunch up, keep your shoulder blades off the ground and then kick those legs from side to side, one over the other. Use the inner thighs 
to squeeze and the lower abdominals to keep those legs up and the lower back on the ground and go at whatever height you need to. You should not feel it in your lower back, you should feel it in your lower abs on the front. Alright, resting, next we'll be going into the flutter kicks, so same position on our back, but this time our legs are going straight up and down instead of crossing over. So again, you need to make sure you can keep that lower back on the ground. Alright, so find where you can do that and then don't let the leg drop any lower. Keep that core engaged and then kick those legs up and down in a straight line. Engage the upper abdominals to keep your shoulder blades off the ground and the lower abdominals to keep those legs up. 10 seconds left. Five. All right, good work. So we're gonna be flipping over. We're going to do a mountain climber circles. So working one leg at a time. So we'll work the right leg for the first set. So we go into extended arm plank position. Then we bring our right knee across to our left elbow, circle round to outside the right, squeeze back and go again. So it's a slow circle. The right foot stays off the ground the whole time. We're keeping our hips facing down to the ground by engaging those abs to stop them twisting when we move that leg. So you oblique crunch across, then rotate out, extend backwards, and hold. All right, onto our backs. We've got a little bit of fun. We've got turtles. So this is a shiny latent special. We're on our backs and we're just arms and legs off the ground, trying to rotate in circles. All right, let's go. So once you've got a full circle, go the other way. And make sure that you keep your hands and feet off the ground. Really tighten those abs and use those obliques to twist. So you rock up and down and twist. Whew. Looks pretty funny. Burns like hell. back on the ground we've just got a wide leg U race a wide U so we're gonna have our legs together and we're gonna trace out a big U so keep the hips pointing forwards you don't twist when you raise to the side and you use those abdominals to keep those legs up, making sure you're keeping that lower back on the ground. So don't dip so low that your butt curves. 10 seconds. All right, flipping over. We've just got some fast mountain climbers just to loosen us up a little bit. So knee goes to same side, no crossing over with this one. Make sure that you keep your butt down and then drive those knees. Engage the core the whole time, keeping the hips flat. 
shoulders are stacked over your wrists and drive those knees Ten seconds. All right, good work. Onto our backs again. So we've got dead bugs. So we're going to be. Let me get my chest strap on. All right. So. Arms and legs are up, and then opposite side and arm, go down, squeeze, back up. Again, make sure that you can keep that lower back on the ground. So if you can only get your leg out to about there, that is fine. If you can go that low, good. Just do what engages your abs. You're not going to get any benefit from it if your lower back comes off the ground. You're just going to get pain in your lower back rather than the front abdominals working. All right, we have what I call lateral leg scissor. So we start with our legs together and up. We lower them as low as we can go together. And then we open wide, avoiding the wall, hold, back to middle, raise up, drop them again. So keep your lower back on the ground. Keep the shoulder blades off the ground by engaging those upper abdominals. You should really be burning in those lower abs. None of these exercises, except for the mountain climbers, are about speed. They're all about controlled movements. All right. Jess's favorite, plank kick throughs. It just sounds nasty. Yeah. So it's similar to the wheelies, except we go back to the plank. So extended arm plank, I raise my right leg to about halfway and my right arm and then I kick through with my left. Then I step back to plank, left leg goes up to halfway, left leg raises, right leg kicks through. So we go back to plank each time to re-engage the abdominals, making sure that we're keeping our hips down. And then we rotate to the side. All right, fast bicycle crunches. So on our backs, hands behind our head. We're gonna bicycle the legs and crunch opposite elbow. So keep the shoulders facing up. Use the oblique to twist across at the top, but your shoulder blades stay off the ground by engaging those upper abdominals and those lower legs, piston, using the lower abdominal when it extends. And again, only go as low with the leg as enables you to keep the lower back on the ground. Push through, nearly finished. All right, time to stretch those abs out a little bit. So we have a downward dog to knee drive. So we go extended arm plank, Push back to downward dog, come forward, opposite knee to elbow, crunch, hold, back to plank, downward dog, opposite knee to elbow, 
Make sure the hips stay facing downwards. We're not twisting the hip to bring that knee across. We're engaging the obliques. And make sure that you hold for a second with that knee crunched to that elbow. All right, that's the end of our first set. So, buzzer's gonna go in 10 seconds. We've got another 40 seconds after that. So I suggest having a bit of a stretch of those abdominals. through that again. And I like stop my neck from hurting a bit when I like lift my shoulder. So imagine that you're being pulled up from the middle of your chest rather yeah. than your neck. So lead with the chest. Yeah. It might help if you try and push your shoulder. It sounds ironic, but actually try and push your shoulders back. Okay. So you want to lead up with the chest but have the shoulders trying to go back a little bit. That should help you stop from crunching the neck up. Okay. All right, so we're just about to start. So we've got our scissor kicks. So remember, find what level of your legs works to kick that lower back on the ground. And then lift the legs and scissor one across the other. Keeping them straight and squeezing those inner thighs to cross them over and engage those abdominals. All right, flutter kicks are next. So again, up and down in straight lines this time. So find the level and then don't drop below that. Remember, don't let your hips twist side to side. Keep them pointed up. Use the abdominal to keep that hip from dropping when you lower that leg. Ten seconds. Feel the burn. Whew. All right, mountain climber circle, left leg. So remember to keep the hips down and facing forwards. And use that oblique to crunch across the body, then open up and then back. Don't let the leg touch the ground throughout. So this works our glute a little bit as well on the extension. And definitely all those abs because we're keeping the butt down. Imagine that we're sucking our belly button backwards to our spine to keep everything flat. Nearly there. All right, turtle time. It looks funny. It looks easy, but it ain't. So don't forget to switch direction as well. Or you're only gonna get one oblique. So legs up. Shoulders up, get that rocking up, down, and that twist. So you, you crunch up to lift the hips up, and then twist with the obliques to move. Then pivot, lifting the shoulders, and keep going. But every movement is a crunch.
All right. Wide U leg raises. If at any point you feel that you've lost the lower back, bring the legs upright again and curl until you can feel that lower back pressing down again. Then slowly lower the legs until the point where you just feel it start to come off and then don't go any further. So again, this is not speed, slow, controlled movements, keeping those abdominals engaged. All right, fast mounted climbers. So we're halfway through the second set. Remember, these are just straight, there's no cross body. Keep the butt down. This is not a leg exercise as such. If we're up here, we're not engaging the core, we need to drop to that plank position and then piston those legs. 20 seconds. Make sure that you extend the leg back fully and then drive the knee up. All right, dead bugs. So remember, opposite arm and leg. Hold for a second at the extension, then slowly back up. Drop the other side. Keep the hips and the shoulders all pointing upwards. Don't let the body rotate along that elongated axis. It might want to twist. We're going to engage the abdominals to stop any rotational twisting movement. All right, so we have the leg scissor lateral, so we open and then come back together and then up at the top. So start with legs together, upright. Slowly lower, then open, hold, bring together, slow raise. Drop down. Again, only go as low as you can keep that lower back on the ground. So slow drop, slow open and hold, then slow raise, get a half second rest at the top, then engage those abs again. All right, plank kick throughs. Make sure that we don't have twisting of the spine with this. The only twisting is if that knee joint and the shoulder. The upper body stays in a straight line by engaging the abs. We rotate on the knee and shoulder, but the torso stays in a straight line throughout by, you guessed it, engaging the abs. The full core, to be honest, actually.
Okay. Two left. Fast bicycles. So make sure with this one, Jess, that you're not crunching your head when that elbow goes. You want the rotation to be of the torso. So imagine that you're being pulled by a chain in the middle of your chest. It's getting pulled side to side rather than like your neck coming up. Nearly there, finish off. All right, last out exercise. We've got the down dog to the knee drive. So extended arm plank, then we push back, down dog, hold, come down through, opposite knee to elbow, crunch, hold, back to down dog, hold that crunch for a second or two, again, keep the hips pointing downwards flat, you don't rotate like that, you keep them flat and use the oblique to crunch across your body. All right, that's the end of our abs. So this buzzer, buzzer's gonna go in 10 seconds. Then we will have a quick rest while I set the timer up for our glute burnout. So grab a quick drink. Have a towel off. Have a stretch if you want. So you can just stretch up. So as I said, for the glute, we're doing 30 seconds of each of the exercises, in, so seven exercises in one stretch. The stretch is gonna be our rest. So we're starting upright. So the first three of our exercises work both legs. Then the next four work one leg. We will work our right leg first. Then we have 30 second pretzel stretch for that leg. Then we go back through again. So we're just gonna start with a squat to 45 degree hip twist, but we do not move our feet from the front position. We're gonna do a twist with a pivot. So I'll show you what it looks like. So we have our feet in normal squat distance. We squat down and then we come up. So if I'm going up to the left, I'm gonna twist my hips to 45 degrees, pivoting on the front foot which stays down and the back foot comes up onto my toes, engaging that glute, squeezing that muscle, twist those hips to 45 degree, then I rotate back, down, up to the other side. So it squeezes that back leg glute and then we come down, squeeze both, drive through what's going to be the front heel and then pivot that back leg, squeezing that glute. All right, so we'll do 30 seconds of that. Then we'll go into the other exercises which are easier to explain, so I'll just do them on the fly. All right. So down, up. So hold at the top when you've got those hips open for a second, so that you're squeezing that glute. Then come down. Drive through the heel, push back up. Remember to pivot up onto the toe to get that glute going. All right, standing kickbacks. 
45 degree arch at the back, squeeze one leg back, squeeze the other leg back. So the leg goes back straight and we're keeping the hips pointing down and forwards, squeezing that glute and hamstring. Keep the pelvis tilted again so that we use the glute and we're not just arching our back. All right, onto our stomach. Heels together, knees bent. Squeeze the glutes, open the legs, tap the heel, down. Squeeze, open, close, down. This is gonna burn. All right, laying on our left side, right leg straight is going up, down, forwards, down. So squeeze the glute. The only part of our body that is moving is that right leg. And we're using that glute to move up and forwards. All right, same leg. That leg is doing little circles. So forward, then back. Engaging the glute to rotate backwards. We're not opening the hip up. The hip stays facing forward. Use that glute. Feel that burn on that squeeze backwards and down. Squeeze that glute, feel that burn. All right, bent donkey kicks. So hands and knees, right leg, engage, back, down, tap the knee. Don't take weight onto it. Make sure that you are, imagine you're a dog with a tail between its legs, twisting your pelvis, rotated forwards. So that we're not arching our back to lift the leg, we're using the glute. All right, same position, fire hydrant. So that right leg comes out 90 degree down. Make sure that you are keeping the hips as much as you can facing forward. And use the glute to open that leg up. Nearly there. All right, stretch time. So down onto our back. I'm gonna stretch that glute out. So cross the right leg over the left and then pull that in and feel that stretch out. So once this dinger goes, we're gonna go through that same thing again in 10 seconds, starting with the squat to 45 degree hip twist. And then we'll be working the left leg. All right. Squat position, down, up to 45. Make sure that back leg pivots on the toe to get full stretch and fully squeeze that glute. All right, standing kickback, so bend 45 degrees, hips forward, alternating powerful kickback. Imagine you're pulling against a resistance band and remember to keep that pelvis tilted so that you engage the glute, not the back arching. All right, onto our stomachs. Frog supermans. So heels together, knees bent, engage, open, close, lower. So imagine you've got a piece of paper between your butt cheeks that you're trying to keep there. All 
right. On our right side, left leg raises and forward. So make sure that your hips are facing directly forwards. And keep that leg straight so that we engage that glute. So the only thing moving is that leg and we're squeezing it back quick. All right, so leg circles. So forward, up, round the back, squeezing that glute. Should really be feeling that burn in that lower glute, especially when we're back at that 45 degree angle. Remember, don't let the hip open up. Use the glute. Nearly there, five seconds, hold that leg up. Nearly there. All right, bent donkey kick. Remember, use the glute, not the back. Use the abdominals to keep that core tight so that our back is flat, not arched. And use that glute to drive that leg. Actively squeeze it to engage it. All right, fire hydrant. So out to the side, 90 degrees, hold, drop down. Again, keep that spine straight, no twisting. Pelvis is facing down. We're not rotating. You will know that you're doing it. If your opposite arm wants to bend, that will mean that shoulder's dropping, which means we're rotating. All right, pretzel stretch that side. And then we'll go into a more comprehensive stretch. So we're done working out, guys. Go work. I know that was deceptively difficult. So after this stretch, we'll come up and get a sweaty selfie or just an exhausted selfie. And then we'll go through a stretch of those lower legs. So I'm just going through a bit more of a stretch of those hammies, glutes, etc. because we do need to be able to move tomorrow. So we're just Go through some stretches. I don't have anywhere to go, so you know. <laughs> Alright, so we'll just go figure four. So make sure that you have your hips pointing towards your straight leg. So I'm just doing my left first, you can do whichever. Oh, it is raining out there. So straight leg, hips. It's bucket in here. Yeah. So hips facing the, that extended leg, keeping the back straight so that we can get the hamstring to begin with. Just gonna reach out. So we pivot at the hip, but we keep the back straight so that we feel the stretch through that bottom leg. Pulse for a little bit. So we're moving that muscle through the stretch. All right, now we can curve down. So you can relax that back, drop those shoulders. So drop the head, reach out as far as you can with your hands. If you can grab your foot, good. If not, grab onto the ground and inch your fingers along. So you'll be pulling those shoulders open and dropping that head down. So we should be feeling this along the lower leg as well as that back and a little bit in that side obliques that we've been working as well. And also those shoulders. So just go as low as you can and hang. Pulse for a little bit. And we'll just sit up and if you can grab your toe, pull back. If not, just flex your toe back. So we just get a little bit of that calf and a little bit of the insertion at the bottom behind the knee where we often get tight as well. So just a couple of seconds there. All right, bring that straight leg to meet that bent leg, heels together, lift up off the ground with your hands. 
tilt forwards, drop the butt. So you should now be on the front of that pelvic bone. Keeping the back straight, we're gonna lean forward and just hold. So we'll feel this in those groins. A little bit of the glute, probably not much yet though, but those groins mostly. All right, and then fold that back down. So drop those shoulders and then sink as low as you can go. So this will open that groin up again and then that lower back area. Well, there's those shoulders a bit if you want to, instead of grabbing onto your feet, if you want to walk those hands out again. All right. Then we're going to do that on the other leg. So I was doing my left, so now my right is straight. Remembering that I'm twisting my hips to face down that straight leg. So I'm not facing this way because that way when I go, it'll be really good for my obliques, but it's not going to get that hamstring properly. I need to drop that hip back a little bit. So I'm straight, back straight, lean out, feel it in that hamstring that glute a little bit and pulse all right drop that back curve over drop the shoulders and the hands head as low as you can go feel that stretch again if you can't grab your foot that's fine inch your hands along the ground to open those shoulders up a bit All right, and then just coming up, either grabbing onto those toes or just flexing your foot back to get a little bit of that calf and those insertions behind the knee. All right, get a little bit of hip flexors and glutes at the same time now. So we'll come up onto our front and we'll go into a deep lunge, right leg forward. So right leg 90 degrees. We can put that back leg, knee can be down. And then we're gonna raise the torso up so we can sink those hips. So we're gonna feel this a little bit in that front glute and hamstring, but a lot in that back hip flexor. So just drop those hips down, open that hip flexor up. If you're not feeling it fully in the hip flexor, if you open your chest up and pull with your arms, that will elongate that chain of muscles. So a little bit for hamstring here as well. We're gonna push through and straighten that right leg. So we sink back. Keeping that right leg straight, you'll probably be able to get lower than me because I can't bend properly on this leg. But just straighten and sink those hips down. Feel that stretch along that leg. All right, coming forward again, keeping that right leg in front. We're going to drop it so that the shin is in front at 90 degrees. So make sure that you keep those hips facing forward, they don't twist, and go as low as you can. If that's only this low, that's fine, but you should be feeling it in that right glute, and then that left hip flexor again. So keep that shin across your body, drop those hips. Couple of seconds. All right, you can bend that leg in more so you can move that foot lower under the hip and then we're just gonna crawl forward, sink those hips down, elongate the back. So you'll feel this, that whole right glute, bit of hamstring, the whole left hip flexor at the front and then along your back as well.
All right, coming back up. We're just going to bring that left leg round straight out in front of us and then sink back and get that right quad. So make sure that you move that heel so that it comes next to your butt, not under it. And then lean back, open up that quad and hip flexor. This will also open up those abs as well, which we used a little bit tonight. All right. We're going to repeat that on the other side now. So wiggle back a bit, drop that right leg back straight. That left leg is going to be that lunge leg, so 90 degrees. Make sure that your hips are facing down and then raise that torso up. Sink into that stretch. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Oh. Again, if you're not feeling the full stretch or you're really tight in the hip flexor, open the chest up and pull back. You feel it along that entire front chain. All right, rocking back, keeping that left leg straight in front of us, bending back onto that right one. Drop the hips, feel that along the left leg, hamstring, calf. All right, pivot forward again. And then we're taking that shin across in front of us at 90 degrees, keeping the hips facing down, sink down. Keep the back up for now. Just sink into it, feel those glutes opening up. Yeah. All right, then bend that knee a bit more, bring that foot closer under you, and then fold forward. Reach out. My dog's just gone. Oh. <laughs> My dog's just gone um, like his mum's back to Melbourne, so I'm very sad. Oh no, Ruby. Had it for two months straight. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good incentive to come back to Melbourne. Yeah. But I don't have a I don't have a bedroom in the house. Mm. <laughs> oh. Alright, last couple. So we're just gonna do that quad. So bring that right leg round front again. Then that left one. Pop it back to the other side. Again. <laughs> again, making sure that heel is not under the butt. That will limit the stretch. It's at the side. And then lean back. Open up that quad and hip flexor and those abdominals as well. <laughs> Show us how to do down dog. <laughs> All right, and then we'll just stand up. We've got three more just to open those hips up a little bit. So wide, wide position. We can put our hands down on the ground for support. We're gonna do side lunge one leg, other leg stays straight, pivots up onto the heel, drop the hips. So we'll feel this along that inner groin. You can take the weight through your hands because we're gonna be tired in those legs. So side to side, sink the hips down. So hold for a couple of seconds, then swap sides. Just do a couple each side. All right, back to center. Walk those feet in just slightly a little bit. Keep them facing out at 45 degrees. We're gonna stand up, put our hands on our knees, and we're just gonna go side to side a little bit. So you you rotate forward and back a little bit as well with those hips. So just open those up a bit. And 
and then we're going to add in just the shoulder drop so we're facing forward and then we drop one shoulder down come back up stretch back drop the other shoulder down hands in the middle wobble those feet in and then just slowly stand up vertebrae revertebrate uncurl and then one final stretch of the abdominals hands together arch back stretch out that front chain hips side to side so we can get those obliques a little bit and those hip flexors and we are done all right guys great work on completing that workout i hope you enjoyed it the girls seem to that followed along live with me i know it was definitely an intense burnout of those abs first and then those glutes but i hope it wasn't too difficult i know that we'll all probably be a little bit sore tomorrow but that means that we worked really hard tonight so embrace that pain just as you did through the workout if you did follow along, as always, I would love to hear your feedback. It is really appreciated. And as always, keep your eyes on the page, looking out for more workouts from me throughout the week. Catch you guys.